Jesus name we pray Almighty Father you have taken your seat among us we are so happy to have you here because you are here we are peaceful we are blessed because you will do good things for your children speak to us let them hear your voice clearly lord divine we worship the darkness in the mind of your children will disappear your eternal light will shine among us we love you we welcome you we give ourselves to you we open our hearts to you we give all we build that belongs to us unto you father in jesus name we pray Amen. father our children also remember them in their place even as they play run up and down let your angels take care of them Amen. we send away every devil every spirit of darkness that come among this among us that go among the children we command them out now yeah. in the name of jesus yeah. we come we cover this come with the fire of god yeah. with the presence of god yeah. oh lord make everywhere secure for your name in jesus name yeah. anyone that is uneasy passing through any pain any disorder that is not allowing him allowing her to be attentive we command order into his life we command order into her life and say receive peace in your life now by the power of god in jesus name thank you father in Jesus name we pray amen. amen in our message opening message this day we are considering holiness revival movement God's end time ministry for this generation we could well say holiness revival movement God's end time ministry for this generation holiness revival movement God's uh, ministry for this end time generation this is another way. Holiness revival movement. God's ministry for this end time generation. But we have rather put it holiness revival movement. God's end time ministry for this generation. Our God is a god of plan when in acts of apostles chapter 7 acts of apostles chapter 7 the Bible tells us a long account, very long account that was given to show God's end time 
plan. Stephen or Stephen gave this plan. He narrated it. He was narrating it to the children of Israel. Picking the matter from the beginning. How God began his war. How God chose the fathers. How God promised the coming of the Messiah. How the Messiah eventually came. How he was telling the people to show that everything is planned. So, we are living in the end time generation and God had planned it long time how it should be at this time. How it should be. Look at it in Acts chapter 7 from verse 1. Then said the high priest are these things so? And he said, that Stephen began, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Karam and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I will show thee. Then came he out of the land. You see how he went to the beginning and picked up the story from there. Then look at it in verse 13. Verse, verse 13. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren. And Joseph, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then said Joseph, and called Jacob, his father, to him, and all his kindred, three score and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt. He, he began the story and was picking it to show you that God doesn't do things ordinarily. It's well planned. Now, take it again. He said in verse 20. In which time Moses was born and was exceeding fear and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. He took the story chronologically. He wanted to achieve something. He wanted to show how Jesus Christ came. That it is all divine plan. All divine plan. Then look at it again in verse 31. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the side as he drew near to behold, to behold it. The voice of the Lord came out unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and does not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where Thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and I am come down to deliver them. And now, come, I will send thee into Egypt. He talked how they entered Egypt, they came out of Egypt. Divine plan. God was involved in the matter. And he continued to narrate his own story. Again, in verse 42. Then God turned and gave them up to, wash, to worship the host of heaven. As it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, have ye offered 
to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness yeah ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your God Remphan figures which ye made to worship them and I will carry you away beyond Babylon the children of Israel backslid went away from God into sin and the Lord forsook them now he said verse 45 which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus unto possession of, of, of the Gentiles whom God drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob but Solomon built him an house can you see he now traced back to the kingship of David how David took over um, God made David king over the children of Israel verse 49 heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool what house will ye build build me said the Lord or what is the place of my rest had not my hand made all these things ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears ye do always resist the Holy Ghost your fathers did so so do ye which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and they have slain them who shot before of the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it can you see it now he has traced to the coming of Jesus and to the attitude of the people towards Jesus and towards the followers of Jesus you have rejected Jesus who came according to divine plan and you are persecuting the followers of Jesus and you are justifying yourself you stubborn people which of which which prophet didn't your fathers persecute it's your nature it's your nature that you're exhibiting this persecution you're doing against us for Jesus it's your nature he took the story took the story he wanted their eyes to open some of them understood some didn't understand but under, came to understand later some reacted badly to it Paul was there too as Saul and he was party to the date of Stephen to stone him to would stone that he died but it was later his eyes opened that what Stephen was saying was true so I am going to do a, a narration concerning God and his ways in the book of Acts of Apostles Acts of Apostles chapter 15 verse 18 Oh, I read 17 and 18 that the residue of me might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called seeth the Lord who doeth all things all these things verse 18 everybody want to go known unto God are all his works from the beginning of his of the world God is the one that does all these things so that people can see his righteousness. People can find his righteousness. So, all, I mean, what you see God doing, the holiness revival movement that you see today is the work of God. It's God's divine plan. So, well, let's follow it. Let's go with it. And I want you to go with it. As Stephen did to the children of Israel to cause them to know their errors 
to cause their eyes to open to truth and of course a few of them really came to, to know it so I will say the same that our God is a God of plan and strategies when we look at the history of God's work from the beginning of the fall of man into sin and Satan we see that sin and Satan are strong forces of evil only God knows how to overcome evil only God knows how sin can be overcome Satan can be overcome yes only God knows how he can take man from this sinful world to heaven only God can prepare a table before a man in the presence of Satan only God knows how to give you heaven despite Satan's walk on earth for he knew it the way that I take the Lord knows the way through the wilderness of the world through the wilderness of sin and through Satan and demons he knows the way out yes and God will make you know who has found favor in his side because you are looking for truth you are looking for truth you are seeking the truth you are praying for the truth he will show you the way of victory he will show you how you can escape the corrupt earth and make it to heaven God will show you how you can overcome Satan and all his powers and make it to heaven that's what I want to let you know the greatest wisdom mortal man must exercise is the wisdom of aligning himself with God and following his design path the greatest wisdom is the wisdom of foolishness because where is the wisdom of the wise where is the educated man where is the scientific man God has considered the wisdom of man the intelligence of man as foolishness but that which man considered foolish that is the ways of God is the great wisdom of God for it pleased God through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe and the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of man so if a man can align himself following God's path following God's design you will reach your destination you will reach eternity look at it in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 29 Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 29 the Bible tells us here saying oh that they were wise that they understood this that they would consider their later end oh that they were wise that they understood this they would consider their later end the wisdom of God actually was involved in holiness revival movement the bringing up of holiness revival movement and bringing churches and ministers to it but I say it looks foolishness to some people some came and ran away and you look at them you, you, say, you will say the same thing with God 
Oh, that they were wise. That they submit to this wisdom of God. The destruction that has come upon them would have not come upon them. That the depravity of righteousness that has clothed, clothed them now should never have been like that. They would have seen a wonderful future. Both in life and in ministry. Both on earth and in heaven. They followed divine plan. In the book of Psalm 81. Psalm. 81 verse 13 to 16 13 to 16 rather the bible tells us here saying psalm 81 verse 13 oh that my people had hearkened unto me and israel had walked in my ways i should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. But their time should have endured forever. Can you see? And in verse 16, he should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat. And with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. What is the Lord saying? He is talking to people who will sober themselves and follow his plan. Who will sober themselves, humble themselves and follow this design that God has made. This plan. It is a plan from generations to generation. It started from before the world began. If you will follow it. As he has brought you to holiness revival movement. If you will submit to it. If you will. So all your power. All your zeal. All your vision. You control yourself. You will not be a castaway tomorrow. He was the one who brought you. He has a reason why he brought you. That's what he said. You follow his plan. You follow his way. You follow his design. Your name will not be missing in the book of life. I'm talking to, to you about the God of plan. Now, God's plan for human salvation. In the book of Romans, chapter 11. Verse, Romans chapter 11, verse 33 to 36. Romans 11, 33 to 36. The Bible tells us here saying, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who had been his counselors? Or who had given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever and ever. Let the congregation say... You are before the God of plan. The whole world is planned out. Everything. If you know this, yours is just to follow. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow, follow Him, follow. I will follow Jesus. Every 
everywhere, anywhere. I will follow, follow him, follow, follow. I will follow Jesus everywhere he leads me. I will follow. Remember, everywhere he leads me. Did he lead you here? Follow him. Follow him. You know, Jesus Christ was washing the feet of his disciples. And Peter came before him. He was ready to wash Peter's feet. Peter said, no, you can't wash my feet. No, come, I have reason why. I'm washing your feet. No, you can't wash my feet. Do you know this implication? The implication of what you're doing. If I cannot wash your feet, if you cannot humble to follow me in what I am doing, you, are not, you will not be mine. That's the whole thing. You will not be mine. So, follow the Lord. That's what God wants us to know. When Satan caused Adam and Eve, to fall from God's righteousness in the Garden of Eden, he thought God had lost humanity forever. That nothing clean would come out of an unclean. That was in the mind of Satan. The wickedness he does, the corruption he brings upon the world, he never thinks there is a way out. He never thought there was going to be a way out. When he brought about the fall in the garden of Eden. Did not the devil say. When we were going to Europe. A people I have finished with them. He thought he had finished. With Europe. All these American people. That he had locked them up. That there could not be righteousness there anymore. But none unto God are all his works. He is the God of plan. He is the God of plan. Where Satan thinks he has locked up, there will be a way there. I am he that open it and no man can shut. The devil thought he has locked you up. That there can be no righteousness in you. That you cannot come out anymore. He has taken you to a place where you won't come out. The devil thought he has sealed up your family. That there's no way anymore. He had, we, we brought that thing upon your life. When you desecrate that, you, des, you cause that desecration against God. When your family went into that maze, he said, Final, I've closed them up. But God, the wise God, is a God of plan and has begun his plan for your life. He has begun his plan for your family. He has begun his plan for your village. Hallelujah! The Lord has begun his plan for the nations of the world. Because that's it. So, he, the devil thought everything was over. But, what happened? The, the Lord said, Satan, I'm going to do a new thing to recover this man. I'm going to do a new thing to recover this woman. I'm going to do a thing to recover the human race in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 the Lord says and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel you will wound him because in warfare there can be wounding but there is winning. Wounding, wounding and winning are two different things. Somebody can see in cure wound but he won't by, by the way. So Jesus will win over you. Although you will bruise his heel he will break your head. He will bring an end to your way. And those people you think can no more come to righteousness, they shall come to righteousness. Those nations you think you have closed up the door for them, wonderful doors shall be opened unto them. Those families you think you have condemned 
before the Lord. The Lord shall open wonderful door to that family. That is God. The seed of the woman will do it. So God began his plan. God began his plan. Let there be hope in your life. There is a way. The Lord is doing something about that situation. Let there be hope. There shall be a visitation. That's how it went. That's the work of God. The seed of the woman would come in. So, humanity went into real corruption. To the point that God had to destroy the human race with water. And spared only just Noah and his household. After the flood, God's redemption plan was noticed as he chose Abraham and went into a covenant with him by whom he would bring the seed of the woman into the world for human salvation. In, Je in Genesis chapter 12, I read verse 1 to verse 3. God was walking. God was planning. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. I will, make, I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse them that curse thee. And curse him that curse thee. And in thee, everybody, shall all families of the earth be blessed. But at this time, the families of the earth were in jeopardy, in confusion, in deprivation, in darkness. But I'm doing something to bring light, to bring salvation to the families of the earth. But I'm going to pass through someone. I'm going to pass. That's why I picked you, Abraham. That's why I called you, Abraham. That I'm going to pass through you to bring my salvation to the families of the earth. Not only that, he promised in Genesis. Genesis. We want to read chapter 22. Before chapter 22, verse chapter 17 first. Verse 1 and 2. Genesis 17, 1 and 2. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Bless read to four. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, as for me, my, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. What covenant? The covenant to reach the world. I'm entering agreement with you, Abraham. That through you, I'm going to reach out to humanity. To save humanity. Remember, the families of the earth. The various groupings of the earth. To be saved, shall receive my blessing. Through you. So that's how God called Abraham. And again in chapter 22, verse 16 to 18. Genesis 22, 16 to 18. The Bible tells us. And let's read from verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I shown, said the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son that in blessing i will bless thee and in multiplying i will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in thy seed talking about the seed of the woman the seed of the woman shall come out from the offspring of Abraham. He shall come out after the nation that Abraham shall bring forth. 
the nation Israel, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. All the nations, Nigeria, Africa, Europe, America, Asia, all the earth, all nations shall be blessed through thy seed. Through this Jesus. It's for everyone. We, it's, 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 it's for every nation. And it's coming to Abraham. God is a God of plan. While the devil thinks there's no hope for mankind, there's hope. There's hope. There is, is hope for this end time generation. Well, you think righteousness has died. The churches have lost it all. Something is going on. A divine plan is already at work. The Lord, the glory of the Lord shall be recovered. Now, let's follow divine plan and go with him. Now, the nation Israel was of course chosen by God to be the nation that should shine forth the glory of God in the dark and sinful world. The nation by which the seed of the woman would come for the salvation of the world. Just as he has told Abraham, I will make of thee a great nation. That's Israel. That's Israel. I will make of thee a, a nation. I'm going to choose a nation. I'm going to choose a nation. Israel. I will grow the people. I will grow your children. One of your children, I'm going to grow him up into a nation and choose that nation. The seed of the woman shall be coming out through that nation. And see it, he pronounced it to Moses. Go and tell the children of Israel that this is my plan for them. That I am planning to use them in a special way. In Genesis chapter Genesis, God had that plan. He was going to use them, Israel, in a special way. Genesis chapter 19, verse 3 to verse 8. Sorry, Exodus, not Genesis. Exodus chapter 19, verse 3 to verse 8. Exodus chapter 19, verse 3 to verse 8. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I have you, I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the ways which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Yes, he told them, keep my ways. And the children of Israel answered, in verse 8, and all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. We have, a, we have gone into a covenant with God. So a covenant has been made to bring the seed of the woman. It's coming through the nation of Israel. Because some people say, Jesus is for Israel. Jesus is a white man. Jesus is the, it's for the whole world. It's the wisdom of God that is planning, picking people. A road must be constructed to join one point to another point. And the road must pass through some, some towns, some villages, some rocks, some valleys, some mountains. The road must pass through. So the road of the seed of the woman that was coming for final victory over the devil had to pass through Abraham, passing through the children of Israel. That's how God did. But it's coming actually for the whole world. Amen? Amen? No, let's go. That's what God is doing. Yes, in Deuteronomy, Moses acknowledged the, sp the specialty of the children of Israel. They were a special nation. 
A peculiar people indeed. In chapter 4 of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. I read chapter 4 verse 5 to verse 8. Deuteronomy 4 verse 5 to verse 8. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land which ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear of all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great? Who had God so near unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Can you see? What nation? See the handiwork of God among you. See the presence of God among you. What nation? Israel. Check up the nations of the world. Are you going to talk about Egypt? Which was then the capital, I mean, the head, I mean, what was it? The, uh, the, the, the ruling country of the world. Ruling city of the world. Or oh, what will you talk about? Is it Babylon? Is it where? No other place. Everybody sees glory in Israel because of the Lord your God. Because of the presence of the Lord your God. Because God has chosen you and has put his word among you. And you are keeping the word. The Lord is with you. The presence of the Lord is with you. He came and spoke on the mountain. You heard his voice. They brought, they, there was smoke. There was fire. The earth shook. And you had the voice of God. Mortal man had divine voice. Speaking. And you told me that you could not bear to go closer and hear it for you. The Lord is with you. The, 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 the glory of the Lord is with us. The Lord chose that nation. Or oh, to bring the seed of the woman through the nation Israel. Now, that's what God is doing. Now, the seed of the woman actually came from for human salvation through Abraham, Abraham's Abraham and through the tribe of Israel who is the seed of the woman who is the seed of the woman why is she called the seed of the woman look at it in the book of Luke chapter 1 Luke chapter 1 verse 26 Luke chapter 1 verse 26 I read verse 26 the seed of the woman the Bible tells us there let's read from verse 26 it says and in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary which woman? virgin he had never known a man he had ne she had never had intercourse with a man since she was born to the age that she could she was to the marriageable marrying age or marriage age because she was espoused to a man at this time, but kept her virginity. Now, and verse 28, and the angel came into her and said, Hail, thou that are highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at the, his saying, and cast in her mind, what manner of sal sal salutation this should be and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Shall call his name Jesus. Can you now see? A virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son. 
and his name shall be called what? Emmanuel. Which by interpretation means the seat of the woman is God himself. The seat of the woman. Only the woman, no intercourse with man because it will be sinful. It would intercourse with man, then it becomes, then the child born is Adam, is, is the son of Adam. Uh, is son of Adam and then is corrupted by the Adamic nature. But this one, no, just the woman. Just the woman. Now, go on. You will now know the seed of the woman. He's, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. Shall be called the son of the great God. The highest. It's the son of God. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, let's everybody, let all the women read verse 34. One, two, go. Then said the women unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man confirming virgin not just a young lady but one that knew no has never known a man then let all the men take the place of the angel and answer that and answer the women one two go verse, verse 35 Can you see? And the angel answered and said unto her, For I mean, say, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy that he said, and also that holy thing which which shall be born of thee shall be called. The son of God. That's it. The son of God. Which is God himself. I'll prove this all to you. He's Emmanuel. God with us. He is. The, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word is God. The word was God. I, I and my father. We are one. He's one person. So. It's God himself. That came. Why God himself? I told you from the beginning. The matter of sin and Satan is too strong for mortal man on earth. Satan was the chiefest of angels. So which angel again can come and contest with him if God will not be involved? If it will not be God himself. Sin is too strong for natural man to control. No religion can manipulate it. No philosophy can manipulate sin. All those philosophies that say, just be laughing, just be laughing, does not change sin from your life. Only God can handle that matter of sin. So, the seed of the woman eventually came, which is the Lord himself. And that's why he was, I mean, he was, she was born. Look at it in chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. In verse 6. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son. That means other sons follow. This is firstborn. Firstborn. Other children followed. Firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were afraid. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Who is that Savior? Which is Christ 
the Lord himself, the master of the universe, the Lord of humanity. He is the one that came himself. The master has come. Amen? Amen. That is the seed of the woman. That's what God promised the devil right from the garden of Eden. Now, God came himself. God came himself to handle the matter of sin. But the Bible tells us something. Israel as a nation rejected him. They showed this by crucifying him to death on the cross. According to the manipulation of Satan. No. No. I'm telling you something. Look at it in the book of John chapter 19. Verse 14 to 16. John chapter 19. Verse 14 to 16. And it was... And it was the preparation of the Passover. And about the sixth hour, and, and he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. This is your king. Is Jesus not their king? Is Jesus not our king? Behold your king. Everybody say, I receive it. But the Jews behaved negatively. What happened? But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? Everybody said, No! But the Jews manipulated by Satan answered negatively the chief priest answered we have no king but caesar can you see that they rejected him and so they crucified him why satan thought all the plan of god had been frustrated nothing will happen anymore See him now. They mocked at him on the cross. If you are savior, save yourself and save us. He saved others, but himself he cannot save. They said every manner of thing. But do you know what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 and verse 8. But we speak. The wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, what would have happened? They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. God, while you say, you are putting an end into it. It will not be done. It can never happen. The wisdom of God is playing in your life. I, have, I was told of a man who fought the Bible, burnt the Bible. Burnt the Bible. He hated the Bible. He said he was destroying the Bible out of the earth. When he died, his house was the printing Printing praise of the Holy Bible. Amen. Amen. When the Lord brought holiness revival movement to the world, I mean, what is going on now? When we began, everything has been said. Everything has been said against the movement. They said this, they said that. Even people that left us went to say all manner of things. But a mystery is happening. The more they say it, the more we increase. The more they say it, the more we increase. <laughs> Hallelujah. They better stop talking because they will become empty and everybody will come here. Is that not so? 
Don't worry, the Lord will bring the people. In Jesus' name. All that they were doing, all didn't work. If they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. And what happened in the crucifixion? Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I read verse 15. The Bible says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He spoiled principalities and powers. I told you the beauty of suffering that brought God into it to test it because life will not, you won't glory in life without suffering. Jesus said, I came to do the work of my father and to finish it. When did Jesus pronounce that the work had, had been finished? Where? Where? On the cross. What did team mean by it was finished? He had the seat of the woman had finally dealt a final blow to Satan. The sin problem now had finally been settled. Ma, how can get salvation now? People now can enter heaven freely. The veil in the temple that divided the holy of holiest from the holy, that veil has been rent into two. Access to heaven shall be direct now. The work has been finished. If Jesus didn't go to the cross, I'm telling you Christianity would have been vanity. If Jesus didn't suffer, Christianity would have been vanity. And you if you refuse suffering your Christianity is vanity the suffering coming from your husband if you refuse it coming in marriage if you receive, refuse it suffering coming from your parents if you refuse it suffering coming from your workplace if you refuse it whatever is the suffering termination of marriage termination of workplace termination of whatever if you refuse it your Christianity is vain if the persecution of your church you refuse that persecution to be, re to be removed by your church and you're playing it cool there. Jesus has already said to Satan, no, said to Peter, if you don't follow in the way I've provided for you, I steered up the church to persecute you, to open your eyes, to bring you to the place I want you to be. If you refuse that, you have no part to do with me. You have no part. Because for you, for righteousness to be completed, righteousness to be finished it must be finished at the point of suffering i know though I, he knew it the way that i take after he has tried me he shall bring me forth as gold suffering is important i'm grateful you're going to sleep outside today maybe some of you may not even eat food today whatever will happen the lord train you in suffering May the Lord train you in suffering. That righteousness will come back to Christianity. All these people, babes, that, are, that don't want to suffer. They don't want to suffer mosquito bite. They don't want to suffer cold. They don't want to suffer any. No, me, I know God suffer. That's the gospel of the devil. The devil manufactured that song to make your Christianity weak one. To make you not to go to heaven. You are refusing suffering. But it takes suffering to make righteousness complete. To bring forth the righteousness that God is looking for. May the Lord bless you with suffering. May the Lord bless you with suffering. And the Bible says, He knows the way that I take. After He has tried me, I'm not going to suffer forever. Because the Bible says that 
have obey, he obeyed being found in fashion as a, as a man he humbled himself and submit and obeyed the lord unto the cross wherefore the lord has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow to the glory of god the father in the of things on earth and of things in the heaven every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is jesus christ is he made the captain of our salvation perfect through suffering he brought perfection through suffering i myself have passed through suffering the lord has made, made you know some of these things i've suffered all because he would produce righteousness how many of you are ready to suffer i bless god the righteousness shall multiply i say righteousness shall multiply Christianity, that original Christianity will come back. Because the people are ready to die for Jesus. Hallelujah! That is it. He handled the devil on the cross. He put an end to him on the cross. He pronounced that the work was finished. Your name can now, can now enter and rest in the book of life. It's paid for. Hallelujah! that's it now the rejection of the lord jesus as savior to the jews and by the jews open the way to the gentiles yes the world the world the whole world now can gain the salvation everyone in the world can have access to the salvation of god through jesus christ he says go into all the world the Jews refused. By the way, I'm passing through them for the whole world. Go through, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Hallelujah you don't know something god is the way god works is wonderful are these doctrines not pure are these messages not pure are these revelations not pure but the deeper life rejected it and cast me away away with him we don't want him it is the wisdom of god was that not done could you have been gathered like this in the righteousness of Christ how many of you have been washed with the blood of Jesus purified sanctified you believe your name is in the book of life this is just the few it's the wisdom of God all is in plan don't blame anybody Joseph told his brethren no no no, no don't fall upon yourselves it's the Lord that allowed this thing to happen because the Lord wants to work out salvation for the whole world including you as you have seen it this day so that is how God has done it now to end it up holiness revival movement the ministry of Jesus Denomination, den denominations evolved in Christianity in course of time well that saved that served to preserve the truth from the corruption of catholicism and from other christian groups which became corrupt some went into teaching heresies of various kinds they teach that if a man is saved he's ever saved he whether he backslides tomorrow he will still be going to heaven because once a child of god you are ever a child of god they misunderstand that our sonship to god is by adoption the only begotten was jesus who cannot be separated from the father because he's one with the father if jesus gets separated then the god would not exist anymore that's why he's the only begotten but we are adopted children 
adoption God was not our father from the beginning because we sold ourselves to Satan he said ye are of your father the devil because the deeds of your father you do but if you repent of the deeds of your father and come to me and accept me I will adopt you to be my son we are adopted if you go back to the deeds of your father the devil I push you back out of my house because my house is righteous I am holy and righteous I accepted you because you you said you will you, you will obey me you will serve me as a father that you will take my nature that does not sin I write unto you that the year may not sin he that is born of God does not commit sin but you now go back to the sea to sin to set to evil you are serving Satan yea of your father the devil go back he said remember you are just engrafted into a tree you are not originally part of that tree so you could be cut off so they didn't know this they feel that once you're born again you're ever born again once you're hey you, you, you have given your life to Jesus all oh, forever they forget that the soul that sin it shall die so they begin to teach heresies some teach that there's no hell some even will say there's no heaven they teach many things in these denominational churches they say many things so as a result people kept breaking away breaking away to start a, a new denomination where they would teach what they believe would keep the people righteous but then this continued until satan pursued after denominationalism denominations of the world and has corrupted everything that's what satan has done you look now which church from satanic influence which church are there very no I won't say they are not there but God knows how to reserve 7,000 for himself but very scarce Elijah didn't see them so they're so scarce that Elijah didn't see them and thought he was the only one that is how the situation is now because of what Satan has done some teach divorce and remarry divorce away from marry another there's no problem about that and the people are busy going to hell they do many corrupt things many many corrupt things many the person of Jesus disappears and the image of man has taken over now every denomination hangs to the leader whatever he says whether it's in the bible or no i was watching one of these leaders that put up a rod and say everybody watch this rod fix your eyes on it and be praying now i will turn it be pray for i give you two minutes that is complete idolatry moving the people from jesus jesus says look unto me but he said look unto the rod they have gone and these are great people that are carrying billions of them they are on their way to hell and human beings are following sheepishly like that others will stand and block i said no don't take that don't i say don't take any revelation prophecy i refuse it in my church people follow and begin to fight the revelations of god our pastor said we, we it is not he doesn't want it is your pastor the god of heaven is your pastor jesus can your pastor change the bible is it not written in the bible no it is our pastor it up i said the people have gone they are following heroes now the glory of Jesus has melted. Man has taken over. When you come to church, you see man on this. You see man now. Our daddy, our bishop, our overseer, our superintendent, our this. That is what is happening now. It has, the denominations have been affected. 
Are we going to talk about demonism that has entered into the churches of Christ? Demonism. They have all gone. Pentecostals. You know they were saying Pentecostal rascals. It's actually like that now. They do everything. To the point you come to a church, you don't know which church, what they have buried in the church, what they have buried in the altar. They sell anointing oil. They sell, I mean, the thing has finished. You think, now listen, the greatest Christianity today is practiced in Nigeria. No other country is like Nigeria. Is that true? But then, if, if the greatest Christianity is practiced in Nigeria, and they come to Nigeria and find fake Christianity ruling Nigeria, where is Christianity then? It has been affected. So Satan thought he had finished. No, Jesus will come to an empty ground. Jesus will not meet anybody again. That is what Satan is thinking. He's thinking I finished with humanity. They are all going to hell. But the God of the Garden of Eden, the all wise God, devised an end time plan. Hallelujah. He devised an end time plan in his wisdom to bring about righteousness again in the world. His wisdom is an overcoming wisdom. His power is prevalent. There must be the remnant. There must be the remnant. And God planned long that a movement like this was going to come up on the earth in the end time. Are you hearing? Are you hearing? God planned it like this. That a movement like this, that is holiness, revival, movement, world war, will come up on the earth. And that it will come out in Nigeria. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, one of our sisters was talking to me, I think today. It, I heard it yesterday and today, still from her, that intercession for Christ, this prayer intercessors, they got this message. A white woman in a conference in Israel Sidney Jacobs, I, I was told that's her name at that time many years ago, prophesied that the Lord revealed to her that revival was going to come in a place. The Lord shot her the place. The place looked dark. I said, that is Africa. And then she saw a star somewhere, light somewhere, and the Lord said, that light is Nigeria. <laughs> Hallelujah! The Lord said to her, I am bringing end time revival. And it shall be coming from Niger that country, Nigeria. In fact, the woman said, as I heard in another place, that she wished she would, be, she would be living in Nigeria at that time. And that really is a good wish for herself. Please tell her that her prophecy has been fulfilled. That she can, she can now come to Nigeria. Amen. Amen. So, in the conference, they have been keeping material. She had a file for these things. Now, when in one of the conferences, of course, she as they were registered and she had a man said, I am from Nigeria. Eh? Nigeria? 
So she was very excited and began to follow the man, follow the man. When the man sat down, he went and said, Fine, you're not from Nigeria? Good. This is what the Lord has told me. This is what is happening. This now I hand over the file to you. And that the man is one of the three uh, leaders of uh, intercession for Christ. Intercessors for Christ. Is that the name? Intercessors for Christ. So, when they came, intercessors for Christ sent in, the, in, one, in, the, in one of their prayers, uh, prayer conference, or whatever, as the sister said, I wish the sister would have told you herself, they dispatched people to all the states of Nigeria. To the rivers. Some went on board. Some vehicle. Ve going everywhere. And because that the Lord had told them, the man that will bring forth that revival is in Nigeria. So, but they didn't know where the man was from. Where the man was living. So they went from place to place and were praying. That man, come out. The man that will bring revival to the world, come out, wherever you are. Praise the Lord. Me, me, how many of you seated here have heard this story? You have heard this. Ah, uh, uh, it happened like that, isn't it? Wave your hand again. Wave your hand. You heard about it like that. Can you see now? It's a reality. So, the, those who were going on the, on the sea were busy praying. Maybe he's in the riverine area. Come out. You, that man that the Lord has prepared. He said he has prepared you for the end time revival. Come out. Come out. They were going from place to place. To tell you things are in plan. And God shot the wise men. The star of the Messiah. Now. You remember the case of our, our brother. Our uh, brother from Ocean State. That Jesus came to him. Now it is about 22 years ago. And said I am bringing my movement. It shall be the ministry that I want all other people in the world to come into it. It is my end time movement. And it shall be non-denominational. I shall be the leader. And the headquarters of that ministry shall be in Abuja. Are you joining one plus two? One plus one? Are you joining one plus one? These things are happening. Sister Linda was taken to heaven. And the Lord, and when the Lord was sending her back, she said, Lord, the world is corrupt. Where will I go? He said, I have my movement. And I have put my son in my movement. Go as you come, go and join them. If you can hear the preaching given to you there and obey, you will be waiting for me as I come back. I come in the rapture. Did you hear it? One plus one plus one is equal to what? Is it only this? The Lord had been telling me, you are going to do something great for me in this world. Long. I had it long. The sighing had been so great. Right? In my, before I went to the university. So it was so much that I dedicated my time into study of the word of God. So much. And so when I came out as a deeper life, I was made a region overseer. I said, oh, fine, I have a whole region. I could not express myself. He said, no, this is not what I was saying you will do. This is not what I was saying. I said, okay, okay, the state overseer. I was now made to state overseer. I had a great crowd I could preach to. He said, this is not it. But I said, Lord, if this is not, the next thing after here is national overseer. And some national overseers have fewer people than even states. Is it national overseer? I was made national overseer over Sao Tome and Principe. It, it, it still, that's not the answer. 
until when we came here I have found it now this is what the Lord is saying this is what the Lord is saying so I am telling you it is in his plan God has planned out everything everything when Satan thinks that he has taken over the world silence Christianity everywhere to every corner another plan rose up holiness revival movement worldwide say it say it again say the tata now you will you are going to say uh, uh, just be so talking as if you are wondering you're surprised about it i am now in holiness revival movement can you say it to yourself Say it again. Say it as a child. Then I am in God's end time plan. He that will not take my word as a child. That will not humble to take my word as a child. Is not fit for my kingdom. It pleases God through the foolish, foolishness of preaching. To save them that believe. Where is the wisdom of a wise man? How many of you are great? How many great men has he called? How many wise men has he called? How many intelligent men has he called? But God has chosen the weak things. Yes, things that are not to bring to naught. Things that are, that no man should glory. And that they should know that he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Because what we're saying is foolishness is on people. But that's the way of God. You will see it. It's systematically planned. It's the systematic plan of God. The revelations of God about this are many. You knew them. Some came out of yourself. You, you yourself saw the revelation. The Lord gave it to you. You got the conviction. And now, what are the things that make this movement peculiar? What is happening now in this lost state of Christianity, lost state of righteousness, lost state of holiness in the churches of Christ? You see something wonderfully happening. What is it? The knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ comes up afresh. People know God now. People know Jesus now. People understand Jesus now. The understanding of who Jesus is is clear. The understanding of God has come back alive. It was a mirage before. It was getting lost because the truth was not being referred to. Now you can know God. And the Bible says... Let, 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 the wise, let, let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his mind. Let not the rich man glory in his wealth. But let him the glory, glory in this, that he knoweth me and understandeth me, that I am the Lord, that lo I am the Lord that exercise loving kindness righteousness and judgment upon the earth in these things i delight says the lord i am so happy that the god of heaven is walking in your life is walking in the lives of men and people are rising up that know the righteousness of god people are rising up that have have got the love of god they are filled with love for god loving god with all their heart with all their mind with all their soul with all their strength and loving their neighbor as themselves people are right rising up that are doing justice doing restitution putting things right in their way praise the lord that is what the lord is doing that is what the lord is doing all over the world the knowledge of god is as, as filling the air as waters cover the sea by the work that he's doing in holiness revival movement heaven has set loose the angels they're walking along with us 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for story? I say, are you ready for story? Maybe about one month now, or one month, one week, or one month, two weeks. I can't remember again. Okay, after the marriage conference, just the week after the marriage conference, something dramatic happened. This side of the hall, where we have just uh, casted now, we came in the morning to see footprints of babes all over. What is what's this? Footprints of beds in the canopy in my house. There, footprints of beds. Ah, Satan has come here. Something wrong has happened. Now, we went into prayer. We prayed. We prayed. And then, when we prayed, an angel came and saw one of us and said. They were in the guard over this camp because they are the ones guiding this place. Amen. That Satan came very angry. He came with four demons. Very angry against me and against holiness revival movement. He said, I am snatching his people all over the world. <laughs> Amen. When he said, I, ah, he's talking about you. We are working together. Is that not so? We are working together. So, he has sent agents, but the agents are not performing. The agents will come out, will, will clear off the agents. Many agents will be repenting in this conference. As a result, he had decided to come by himself. We saw the footprint of a python in this camp. I'm telling you. And the python was seen physically. Now, the angel now was saying, so when Satan came, he, they asked Satan, Satan, where are you going? He said, I'm angry. I want to go and, I want to go to Pastor Porica. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> he's coming to deal with me. Because I have snatched, not I, holiness movement. Everyone say holiness movement. Amen. Has snatched his people all over the world. And that since agents cannot make it, he has decided to come by himself. And at that time, I was sleeping in my apartment over there. So the angels asked him, will you be able to do him anything? He said, yes. So he said, okay, you can, you can enter. That's where he came. They allowed him. Everybody said they allowed him. So when he came, he was looking for me. I was there. He didn't see me. So, they did all, but I couldn't find me. So, they moved to the church here. And they came with this wool, night, these night beds. They are the ones who were seeing their footprints everywhere. So, they came to be discussing. Then the angels said, leave this place. Leave, leave, leave this place. Now, uh, if the, my brethren snapped the footprints. If, if I knew I was going to share this testimony, they would have shown you the footprints. In the, so they would have play, shown it to you on the screen so that you watch it to see it's a practical matter. 
they, they, that's what is happening the, 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 the world of truth righteousness and holiness and the world of eternal life is made plain to humanity people now understand the Ethiopian eunuch's eyes open to say ah I believe that Jesus is the son of God here is water what does he dare me to be baptized the Jewish, Jewish religion, Jewish festivals have not been able to help in his case. But see it now. The eyes of people are opening to righteousness. You are here. I'm telling you, you will be, you will be changed. You will be transformed. God's work will work wonders in your life. You remember this testimony you listened to, our sister, that says she had been in Marine Kingdom for 30 years. You, you heard about it? Yeah. And that as I was preaching like this, fire light came out from the pulpit and did what? Blew out. I mean, beamed on, his, on her eyes. Bah, bah, bah. The devil flew away. I said, power is coming out of this pulpit. You will be delivered. Yes. The judgment of hellfire and the terror of it is made known to humanity in great force and reality. Everybody now is afraid. Stories of hell are told and that's scriptural. People the Lord has taken to hell is in, this is the plan of the ministry in our generation. They shall go and behold the carcasses of those that have transgressed against me. That's God's word. Look at it in the book of Isaiah. 66 verse 24. Isaiah 66. I read verse 24 to see the type, the way God planned this ministry of the end time it says and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me for their womb shall not die neither shall their fire be quenched and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh this is the plan of God and this is the time he built this thing in here so the testimonies of hell will, re, will deliver the hardened people. But people stumble at this, leave them alone. But we, that's where we're going. The Lord planned this ministry. He planned how it will be. That is where we're putting it unto you as he has planned it. The glory and beauty of heaven is attractively revealed to humanity such that people seek to go to heaven with strong desire heaven didn't make any sense before does it make sense now yes. people have gone there and come back the, pre, the message of heaven is made very plain so that everybody wants, ah, I don't want to go to hell. Ah, I want to go to heaven. Righteousness increased. The fear of God has increased. People are changing, doing restitution. Those who marry wrongly are changing, are doing their restitution, coming out of wrong marriages. People have stolen and returning their, the things they stole. And things are happening everywhere. Wow! It's God's end time plan. And it's given to this ministry. It is this man ministry. He planned it. Again, Christian restitutions and clear life of holiness and righteousness spread speedily among men all over the world. All countries. This is what is happening. God has opened for us a door in, oh, in all countries. It is his ministry. It is his ministry. You are where God wants you to be. If you rebel for yourself, by the way, we don't know you. It's between you and God. We don't know what you are thinking. If you accept it for yourself, yes, 
true, fervent and faithful preachers and workers of the gospel of Christ are springing up in various quarters of the world. True preachers. Doing it well. Not fake, true. Everywhere in the world. Why? Holiness Revival Movement has caused the scales in their eyes to fall by the truth and revelations of God. By the truth of scriptures. Revelations of scriptures. Again, the expectation of the return of Jesus for the rapture of believers is mounting high among us believers worldwide. Everybody now is getting ready for the coming of Christ. Everybody is waiting for Christ. Oh, I don't, want to, I don't want to fail in the rapture. Please, I want to clear myself. I don't want to fail. The great God is doing many things in and through holiness revival movement. God himself is inviting as many that will come into this movement to come for God will bless you and treat you well. As you come into holiness revival movement, fellowship with us, you will be blessed. Amen. Hear the message and change. Not just being a member. No, we are not a, 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 a society. We are a body of Christ. A body of Christ ruled by the Bible. A body of Christ having his nature of righteousness and holiness. Yield yourself to salvation. Yield yourself to sanctification. Submit to baptism in the Holy Spirit. Do your restitutions. And live in love. Pray, obey God in all ways. You will be in heaven. Amen. I just felt that uh, I should give maybe 10 minutes to our sister. Sister Vivian from Sapele. Well, uh, I should give 10 minutes to our sister to share with you about this intercessor for Christ. For I heard the story. Oh, intercessor for? Nigeria. Oh, it's intercessor, intercessors for Nigeria. Not intercessor for Christ. Intercessors for Nigeria. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Actually, the Lord has prepared for the world for many years ago. And unknown to us, we were just praying for the man to come. The story that he has told us is true. But the name is relating is intercessors for Nigeria. Under the leadership of Barrister Emeka Wakba. And then we have five national leaders. And one of the persons that they handed over the message to is engineer Steve Olumiyua. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As the sister said, she had the revelation that the Lord showed her in a vision a very large big place. But covered with total darkness and so that the revelation was going it was going not until he saw a little little light like a star coming from one part of the place and the lord told her that this large place you see that is covered with darkness is the a continent africa but that that light you are seeing is coming from a nation called Nigeria and that it is this nation hallelujah that it is in this Nigeria he is going to bring back the light of the gospel back to the entire world hallelujah and for so many years intercessor for nigeria i believe some of them are in this crowd have been praying for this lie to come to reality i remember vividly that in 2009 there was a prophetic journey that was undertaken by 
all leadership of intercessors for Nigeria. They rode through the river. We both drove through the land all over the all over the nation, calling forth these great lights. Amen. And I remember that in year 2000, we were told that in year 2010, that light will come out from Africa. And by history, I come to realize that Holy Revival Movement it was inaugurated in 2010. Hallelujah. Actually, I have been able to see some of our leaders face to face since me, I discovered Holy Revival Movement. I bought a large quantity of divine revelation of God's judgment and holiness uh, of truth. I took it to them. But my people, I require the prayer of every one of us here to pray for these men that have labor in the place of prayer that the Lord will make them to see that the light has appeared. Praise the Lord. I carry heap of it and took it to conferences, our conference, and give it out. And I know that they did not read it, maybe because of the issue of revelation. And if they had read this book, I know that by now they would have understand that the light has appeared. Praise the Lord. So I require and I plead with us to pray for them because they cannot labor and not partake. That the Lord will open their eyes just as the children of Israel, the Jews are still waiting for the Savior. I believe my people are still like that now, waiting for this light. But the light has come. And you that is a part of this light, bless the Lord for it. Amen. There are so many things that actually has happened in this nation. There was a time there was an election and the Lord spoke to us, the intercessor for Nigeria, that the president of the nation was in the prison. But the election was going on. I went to the prison house in Sapele. We were sent to go around everybody. To, we scattered all over going for prison prophetic release of the president and at the end of it that was the manifestation of president uh, from prison so there have been many things that god has spoken to us concerning nigeria that we went for prophetic action and the thing come as it has been said i am still pleading that these people should be prayed for praise the lord Okay, let's stand up to pray for intercessor for Nigeria. I want us to tell the Lord that God, who has used them to uproot from ground the plan of God, we open their understanding to know that the light has come. Open your mouth and pray, brethren. Please pray. I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray, oh God of creation, you have ordained today the 12th day of the 12th month of this 17 year of victory. That these people, your people that you breathed upon and you have used to pray this light to reality. I am telling you, Jehovah, that by the reason of this prayer today, Lord, wherever they are all over the world, my father, my maker, that your hand of mercy will locate them, O oh God, and open their eyes of understanding in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My father, my God, that O oh God, because they have labor, they will be a partaker of this of this manifestation of the prayer that they have given, O oh God, over this nation in the name of Jesus. Every satanic of every cast that have blocked their eyes and have not made them to see that this light has manifested to day by the word of the living God for it is written that on this mountain the Lord will break and will remove the covid cast the face of the covid cast over the people therefore father by the authority of your word we remove now every face of covid cast over the 
these men and women in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, that the righteousness, the message of holiness and truth that you have bring forth to God, they will accept it with their full heart. And Lord, that they will join up with this work to fulfill your divine agenda, even for their own life, in the name of Jesus. We are taking an insurance of great mercy. We are taking an insurance of their release from this place and that their understanding, oh God, be enlightened. And from this very moment, oh God, I pray, almighty and everlasting God, that this message will get to their hands. And as they listen to it, oh God, their eyes of understanding will be enlightened. And they will record, oh God, and agree, oh God, that God has answered the prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them, bringing them, oh God, into your move, to your praise and your glory, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. Thank you, God. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in
believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Oh, oh, oh. you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. You can. Chased me with your blood. You are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin. I believe in you Cause you are my Lord and Savior You are my Lord and Savior Jesus, I believe in you I believe in you Lord, cause you are You are the living Savior Jesus, I believe I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Jesus, I believe.